Hello everybody, Father Bill Holzinger, and this is your Friday Reflection. I'm here in my office because it's raining outside. I know a lot of you like the walking videos. I'm taking a walk and chatting with you, and I, that was kind of fun. Uh, it's a little cold and a little dreary today, and I'm recording this on Wednesday. Uh, no, actually Thursday. I've got to get my day straight. Thursday. I want to share with you, uh, and I want to encourage you to consider what's happening here in the Archdiocese this weekend, starting tonight, which is Thursday. Again, I'm not sure this will get out uh, before that happens, but tonight, Thursday, and then Friday, and all day Saturday. So Thursday night, Friday night, but then all day Saturday at Our Lady of the Vang, and it's the Healing of the Whole Person Workshop. Or consider it like a mini retreat. Bob Shooks, Dr. Bob Shooks, and Sister Miriam, who you may know from uh, internet, she's big uh, with the John Paul II Healing Institute, and Bob Shooks is one of the founders. And the two of them have been going out with their team uh, to offer workshops uh, with us priests in the past and throughout the United States. And we have a very special privilege this week, or this weekend, to be with them. And I'm going to go, I'll be at these uh, sessions to hear confessions for folks. But I want to encourage you to think about going yourself. If you're not going already, uh, this is an opportunity to really think about uh, going. You can go online and register. Uh, that's in our bulletin, and I'll put a link up up here. So hopefully you can see that and put it in our notes so that you can consider coming to this Healing the Whole Person. So it's an evening kind of thing. And as I look at my, um, uh, this is the agenda or the itinerary. Today on Thursday, uh, there's a check-in at 5 o'clock. At 6.15, there's worship and opening prayer an introduction at 6.30, and then at 7 itself, 7 p.m., a talk on healing of the whole person, and that goes to about 8.30, 9, uh, 9.30. And then that will repeat itself on Friday with similar kind of stuff again, uh, but it'll open earlier, 4.30 to 6.30 for uh, confessions. So I'll be there hearing confessions if you want to do that ahead of time, along with uh, the worship and prayer between 6.15 and 6.30, and then again, another talk. In this case, the talk will be on facing our brokenness, where the previous one was again, just healing the whole person. Then there will be a concluding uh, time with confessions again, 8.30 to 9.45, uh, where people can also do some journaling. Saturday is uh, starts at 8 o'clock, and that's, there's going to be daily mass if you want to go. Father, our Archbishop Sample will be there. That's optional for you. There will be confessions as available as well at the same time. Uh, I won't be able to be there right away because we have here at Holy Trinity, we have confessions, mass, and I should say confessions in the morning because it's the first Saturday. Confessions in the morning followed by mass, followed by anointing of the sick. So we will show up probably around 10 or so, 10.30. But from 9 to 9.30 at the event, there will be worship and an opening prayer, followed by then an encountering, oh, this is the talk, encountering the Father's love. And that goes from 9.30 to about 11.15 a.m. Again, confessions are available for folks. 11.15 to 12.45, another talk called Encountering the Father's Love, continuation from the previous. And then at and then there's a lunch break, and then followed at 2.15 with, again, the final talk called Living in Freedom. And then a break and concluding session, and uh, there's a vigil mass even, 5 p.m., at Our Lady Levang with the Archbishop. Okay, that's the itinerary. Again, that may be boring to you, but I just want to share and share a little of my heart. In the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about sports and how important sports are or are not, the positives and the negatives. And in the course of this last week, a lot of things happened, at least for me in my personal vision of the sports world of my team, particularly the Oregon State Beavers. You may know that the Pac-12 has been disintegrated into the basically the Pac-2 with Washington State and Oregon State only. But in the past week, our coach has left and from the Oregon State Beavers. And Jonathan Smith is his name, and he's gone to, uh, what is it, Michigan State. I find myself really having a hard time with all that because I'm, I'm a loyal person. And I'm a loyal person, and I realize why I'm a loyal person because in my background, there's been times when people have not been loyal, where uh, there is a commitment made and then broken. And this is what forms, what you'll hear if you go to these talks, uh, would be abandonment issues or struggles around being abandoned by something or somebody. And when that happens over and over, we start making you know, oaths and promises that I'll never let that happen again. But we react differently than uh, going forward when we have those kind of wounds, like I do sometimes. And so I started noticing that I was really upset and very angry at Jonathan Smith for leaving. And yet, that was a good move for him. If he's looking to, you know, hit the peak of his 
professional experience as a coach, being at the Oregon State Beavers is not a, especially in the current situation, is not an avenue for that for him. And he discerned probably correctly. But in the meantime, I had a pity party. Like, wait a second, I thought you were loyal to us beavers. And on and on and on the diatribe I was saying to myself. And I was fed by other people's comments online of the similar. And what it's just going to reveal to me is I'm still a work in progress. My goodness, it's just sports people, right? Yes, I know there's people that are in the sports where this is a big deal because that's their livelihood and a potential you know, um, ability to go to the NFL for the players. But for me as a fan, how does that affect me? Well, it just brought up all those issues for me. And this is where these kind of things, the healing of the whole person is really important because I would not have known. I would not have had the tools to understand what's going on inside of me that I'm reacting like, like that. And what can I do to find healing in that? Well, and again, the number one is to find the root of that problem. Where was I abandoned and to let God, through the Holy Spirit, heal that kind of stuff for me? And that's going to be a work in progress. And we all have different wounds in different areas, as I do as well. In fact, if you go through the deadly sins, with every deadly sin, there is a wound. In fact, on the other side of those deadly sins, there's something good, though, a desire for the good, but it gets disordered and gets disfigured, and it doesn't play out the way it should. And so people get hurt, either by just circumstances circumstances happen, or we interpret things that way, or an event of actual victimhood occurs. Uh, those things are different ways that we can get wounds. Uh, but the wounds can be healed. God is love and he can heal everything. Love is the most powerful thing in the world. And that's why this seminar, this this healing uh, workshop, I think I want to uh, let you know that I myself have been personally affected by that. Uh, it's helped me so much to continue to be able to have an inner dialogue with myself to figure out what is going on with me? Why do I react that way? And how I can be different? And ultimately, it boils down to bringing that whatever wound, that situation, its source, to the Holy Spirit and ask God to then touch it and heal it. I hope you're able to go. I, I share this stuff because it's important to be vulnerable, to be real. And I'm trying to do that with you today. There's many other wounds. I'm not going to spill you know, all the beans of my own struggles. But I share that one with you because that's something that reveals itself in positive ways because I react as a very loyal person. I'm loyal to the Archbishop. I'm loyal to my football teams and other sports teams. I'm loyal to my staff. I'm loyal to you as parishioners here at Holy Trinity. Uh, and like when I left St. Anne, it was very difficult to leave because I'm, I was loyal to them. And how do I deal with that? And these are the things when those relationships uh, get stretched or broken, uh, what do we do? Well, first of all, we need to seek out and find out where we may be broken in whatever that situation is, and then ask God to heal that. I hope you can come, and I look forward to seeing you. Please approach me if you see me. I will be hearing confessions at all those times, pretty much, when there are confessions to be had, except for Saturday morning, because I'll be here offering uh, anointing of the sick. Father Anthony will be doing the first Saturday Mass, and I'll help with anointings, and then we're going to truck off over to Our Lady of Vauvang for the, uh, the, the event that's going to be offered to us. I'll be preaching this weekend, and I ask for your prayers. And pray for me for all these things, as I will pray for you. God bless. Bye-bye.